Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is declining an invitation to Washington this week. The summit between all three North American leaders was meant to mark the start of the new NAFTA deal between Canada, the United States and Mexico. In a statement to CTV News, the Prime Minister's office says Trudeau will remain in Ottawa for cabinet meetings and a sitting of Parliament instead on Wednesday. Trudeau previously cited concerns over possible U.S.-imposed tariffs on aluminum and steel when asked if he would be attending. For more, I want to bring in political analyst Michael Gagan. He joins me from Williams Lake, B.C. Michael, good to see you again. Thanks for having me. So is it a snub for the prime minister not to attend if he has official Canadian business? I mean, on Wednesday, there's a, a sitting of parliament. There's a, a release of a federal financial snapshot that's very important. Um, what's your take on his not going to the United States at this time? Well, as you indicated, I think he's signaling several things. First of all, Canada is not happy with, once again, uh, this, these ridiculous uh, threats of you know, aluminum and steel tariffs. Uh, you know, for national security reasons on Canadian produced aluminum and steel. Um, and also, you know, the United States has, unlike most other first world countries, has, has completely failed in terms of uh, flattening the curve in terms of COVID-19. So, you know, when the prime minister goes to Washington, he, you know, he, has, he has political staff, uh, ministerial staff, it's their prime minister office staff, etc. So that's a lot of people potentially being exposed and you have a president that, you know, has gone to rallies and done any other things without, you know, any, wearing any masks or whatever. So there's a potential of, of, of bringing back a bunch of COVID-19 infected people. So I think there's also a certain amount of prudence that goes along with that. So I, I think the prime minister made a good call here. The other thing is the rules are if you leave the country and you come back, you got to isolate for 14 days. Now, the prime minister himself may be exempted from that, possibly, because... NHL players and baseball players seem to be exempted, but uh, you, you're right. There's a lot of staff, support staff around him. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think the logistics of that, and you know, are you get, are you going to grant exemption to you know however many people travel with them? Uh, that could be really problematic, and you could end up with a COVID nineteen hotspot in terms of Ottawa or Parliament Hill, and and so I don't think anyone wants to see that. And then also, there's just the sense that. You know, Donald Trump is, you know, given the polling numbers, and I know we have to be careful because, of course, the polls showed that Donald Trump would lose to Hillary Clinton four years ago. But I think the dynamics are very different nowadays. And it, and, it, and the likelihood of Donald Trump being reelected is, is looking less and less. And so there's also a certain element of, you know, let, let's move on with, with uh, whom the likely next president is going to be because... Let's face it, uh, you know, the four years of Donald Trump have not exactly been good for Canada. Oh, Michael, don't count your chickens before they're hatched, you know. Remember 2016 and people thought Hillary Clinton was a shoe in I don't think it's, uh, you know, necessarily prudent to write off Donald Trump at this point. But be that as it may, are we expecting a nasty tweet from the U.S. president because uh, Justin Trudeau is snubbing the invitation? Well, I, I, that's certainly within the realm of possibility, per, uh, you know, and... And that being the case, I mean, uh, and obviously, yes, we can, we can never take for granted, uh, uh, you know, what, what happens on Election Day. And also, there's all kinds of shenanigans in the United States in terms of voter suppression, closing polling stations, uh, interesting things with electronic voting machines. So, as you said, we can never take those election results for granted um, and uh, because they don't, quite frankly, conduct elections in, in the same kind of independent, nonpartisan manner that we do in Canada. So... Uh, so, yeah, we, we, we have to be prudent, but at the same time, there's not a lot to be gained and there's a lot to risk by going there. But I think it also signals that Ottawa, uh, you know, given the high uh, COVID-19 infection rates in the United States, that Ottawa is probably not going to be mo moving to open the border with the United States anytime soon. And I think the majority of Canadians would feel some sense of relief. Uh, at that signaling. Yeah. All right. So let's look ahead to Wednesday because there's a couple of issues at play here. First, we're going to hear about a financial snapshot, not a not a budget uh, from the finance minister, Bill Morneau. But what are you anticipating the government's going to say in terms of forward planning? Well, I think I think I mean, obviously, I'm not sure, in terms of the government, certainly in terms of what the media, the public and the opposition parties are going to be looking at is, you know, how deep in the red are we? Like, how much of a massive deficit are we running? Uh, what's happening with the revenue numbers? What's happening with the uh, unemployment numbers? Those sorts of things, because it's, it's those kind of, you know, that kind of information, that economic information out of that snapshot, which is going to help guide uh, people at both the political and bureaucratic levels in terms of, what we should be doing moving forward. And keep in mind, in, in Ottawa, it is a minority government. So it isn't just 
what the Liberals decide they're going to do. It's also what do the Conservatives want? What do the NDP want? What do the Bloc Québécois, even the Greens? Like, so, that, so everyone's going to be taking a very close look at this snapshot. And then uh, I imagine there's going to be quite a bit of discussion in terms of uh, how we should move forward in the coming months and even years. Political analyst Michael Gagan, I do appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.